Hey everybody, check out this cool thing I found. Isn't that neat? Wait, something weird is going on. Let's be honest, we really did need to change the scenery. Hey everybody, what's going on? So, when I had started this channel, and this isn't my first channel, but I did promise myself I was not going to do any action figure reviews, just because there are others who, who can do them better. I can't really do any justice to what somebody else out there is already doing. But, I really do like these figures, so I do want to go ahead and showcase them. Now it is a little bit bittersweet for me, because these are Hasbro figures, and I have not been happy with Hasbro as of late, and I'm sure those of you who collect action figures and kind of know what's going on, and those of you who collect magic cards particularly, might have heard what's going on. But, you know, seeing as how one of the biggest complaints is, oh, you know, channels aren't positive enough. They need to be positive. Well, here's something positive. Because I will call Hasbro out on their shit, but I will also tip my hat to when they do well and these figures are done well. Uh, especially at the $35 price range. These are actually worth picking up. Now, are they worth picking up if you already have Lightning Collection Mighty Morphin Power Ranger figures? Well, maybe, maybe not. Maybe this review will be helpful. So, let's dig right into it. Here's the packaging, and of course it is the windowless packaging that all the mint and box collectors are such fans of. Despite being windowless, they do have some cool graphics. The back of the package shows the contents within, and last we got a cool image of the side letting you know who's who, and a picture of the figures doing the morphing pose. Why the hell is their Marvel Legends packaging so lackluster these days? These are pretty good for window lists, but I'm a loose collector, so that's that. So here we have Trini and Billy, and I actually received these in the mail the day after. The once and always special had premiered, so you can imagine how tickled pink I was, especially to get Billy after that special did his character so much justice. And of course, Trini, he did a nice tribute too. So, yes, I'm actually glad to have these two, particularly as a great way to launch this particular line of figures. I'm really not going to go over crazy details, um, like you know, articulation. If you're familiar with Power Rangers Lightning Collection, it's pretty much the same, but I will tell you what's different now. First, here, I'll show you Billy, okay. Here's drop down hips, okay, which is different. I don't remember it having that before. Everything else is the same, but one thing that is new is the neck articulation. Now, this is a separate piece, the white part, and I like that. However, where they really messed up, ugh, Jesus, there's no longer a uh, hinge here. There's no longer that, you know, cool hinge part. It's just a ball joint. Now, this does look like the ball joint is separate from the neck, and then the neck is separate from the body. However, the neck itself doesn't really go up or down or forward. It's just a side to side. You get some of that range with the ball, but that's it. That's all you're really getting for up and down movement. I mean, you could try to extend it a little. F fucking Hasbro, for real. Like, use the G.I. Joe articulation. Like this right here. See this? Okay, this is exactly what I'm talking about. It's a separate neck piece, right? Let look at that. That actually has some real up and down movement, but you also have this, which does too. Working on a custom, so I just use this as an example. But you see what I'm talking about? It doesn't have that anymore. So the range on the head's a little limited. I don't know why they would do this, because they have this in their wheelhouse. However, I do like the neck being a separate plastic piece. You don't have to worry about scratching from the helmet or any of the other heads, which was always a concern for me with any Power Ranger figure, but honestly, any Power Ranger figure. So, that is a plus. Trini here is pretty much the same in regards to Billy. We've got a drop-down hip now. For a drop-down, that is bad. Yeah, it's as far as you're getting. You could kind of, like, try to twist it out to the side to get more range, you know, but... Yeah, that's about it. Still, it's better than nothing. 
It's better than nothing being there. I can tell you this much. It's, it's way more articulated than the Super 7 figure. Now, one thing that is new is this right here, and that is a double-hinged elbow on the female characters. I don't understand why they couldn't do this from the beginning, but hey, we got it now. Now, both of these figures do feature pinless technology, and I love how all the Hasblows like to act like their minds are blown when they include this on a figure, you know, and that's how they justify the higher price point because, you know, pinless technology, it's so futuristic, you know, like they're, they're finally doing it, even though other companies have been doing it for years. And I do mean fucking years because here is a 2002 Spider-Man figure from Toy Biz. And what is this? What is that? Look at that. Pinless knees. Pinless elbows. Oh my god. How did they... The, the, the aliens must have been helping them. The aliens must have been helping them. This is 20 years ahead of their fucking technology that they had at the time. Now, of course, pinless joints isn't all you're paying $35 for because they do come with a plethora of accessories, and I feel that this is where the shine and do add that little extra value do i feel they could be a little cheaper sure but i am overall happy with what's included here so for starters they come with what i'm going to call their mealy hands billy has two fists trini has a fist and a karate chop grabby hands for holding their weapons and those weapons include blade blaster in blaster mode and yes as you can see by trini's gun here there is a port at the end so you could put a blast effect on it i'm sure that the blast effects that come with the other lightning collection figures will fit i can only imagine unfortunately the lightning collection figures i do have i kept in storage um so i won't be able to showcase that here now hopefully i'll be getting those out soon and uh I'll give them more confirmation. Of course, if anybody else has these figures, feel free to leave in the comments if that's the case. The Blade Blaster in Blade Mode and the Holstered Mode for their Blade Blasters, and I like that a lot. I like that it comes with all three modes. The Signature Weapons, Trini here with her Power Daggers, Billy with his Power Lance, and he comes with the slightly smaller and separated Lance pieces, which I'm sure will be able to combine with the rest of the weapons. And for the last bit of accessories, I figured I'd show them as a group because that's how they're meant to be seen. And I absolutely love this. I, I gotta say, again, I'm not happy with Hasbro as a company, but when they do good, they do good. And this totally hits the mark. You get morphers, you get morphing hands to hold the morpher properly and pose it. Civilian heads, which by the way, and keep in mind, I did used to have every single Lightning Collection figure up until about fall of 2021. Then like a stupid asshole, I went ahead and sold them, only keeping the Zeo and SPD teams because I figure, hey, Super 7's not going to get to those, and yes... I was selling those in favor of just buying the Super 7 Mighty Morphin figures. Now, I do have Tommy in his Green Ranger duds, and it is an amazing figure. It's good in its own right, but god damn, these are nice. Let's take a closer look at the head sculpts. Now, here's Trini, and Trini was probably the best one the first time around. Out of all the civilian heads, I think that her initial Lightning Collection figure looked really good and was the only one that actually looked like them to some spot on degree. The Morpher itself is nice, and the coins are painted. The coins are painted on both the Morpher and the belt buckle. But that's okay. I'm not against that. And as you can see, the Morpher does have a yellow energy glow going around the coin. Respectively, Billy's has a blue energy. This head sculpt is absolutely stellar. I remember the first head sculpt, and I remember being happy with that because the only thing I had to compare it to was my flip head from 1994, and that was an improvement, but my god, this is a huge, huge improvement. I mean, it looks just like David Yost. That's insane. And the glasses are removable. Now, the hair does have a little indentation on the side because of the glasses, but honestly, though, from afar, on a shelf, and in regular lighting, it's really not that noticeable, especially from the front here, if you look. That doesn't look bad. So you can pull off his 1995 movie look or season two look when he decided to start not wearing glasses and wearing contacts. And there was even an episode that addressed that too. 
Um, but yeah, this is just, I mean, look at that. This, that's awesome. That This is awesome. Would it be too much to ask for an older head sculpt, like the way he looks now? This way we can uh, recreate some scenes from the Once and Always special. I mean, that would be pretty cool. Now, the morphing hands are both set up the same way. Three fingers hold the morpher. And these look accurate in scale, in scale comparison. Like... If the figure was holding the Morpher, it would be equivalent to the figure holding the original 90s Morpher toy, where the Super 7 figure comes with the scale equivalent of the Legacy Morpher, if that makes sense to anybody. And Hasbro fucked up in my favor and gave me two helmets with my Blue Ranger figure. Now this one here has a little scuff on the lens. This one does not, so this is the one I'll display. Now, one thing worth noting is, is that for once, Hasbro did not forget to paint the border around the mouth, at least on Billy, but here on Trini, they forgot. Come on! Like, what the fuck? This is why I went with Super 7, in case if you were wondering, or was going to go with Super 7, because, listen, Super 7, it's they're, they're not, you know, reinventing the wheel by any means, but at least you could kind of, hopefully, depend depend on some consistency from them. I will see. We'll see when that second wave comes out. But, you know, with Hasbro, $35. Come on, guys. I, I really thought, like, they were going to put all the nines in this. Now, granted, I'm not that crazy upset about it. I can paint the silver myself. It's not hard to emulate. I do have the silver paint color that would look good for this. But I, I shouldn't have to. At $35 a piece, I shouldn't have to. Now, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait till I at least get all six of the Mighty Morphin Rangers before I go ahead and make any alterations, just so they can all be customized in unison if I have to do any type of modifying. So, yes, I'm going to have to paint the border around her mouth, but I am going to wait a while on that. And we have these energy effects. As you can see, they're the same sculpt. Are they the most fantastic thing ever? No, but it's still a cool effect. I like it a lot. And here we have some figure comparisons, and here they are with Storm Collectibles, MK3 Sub-Zero, Renew Your Vow Spider-Man, Marvel Legends, Super 7 Green Ranger, and McFarlane Dark Knight Trilogy Batman. And these guys are actually pretty small. I never actually noticed before that the Marvel Legends are actually slightly taller than these guys, but I also noticed that the Ghostbuster figures were slightly smaller too, so maybe it's just live action stuff, I don't know. And here's the last comparison which makes the most sense. Here they are with the 1970s Japanese television show Spider-Man, and this is actually what started it all right here. Spider-Man is what started Super Sentai, which in turn started Power Rangers. If you don't believe me, go ahead and Google that shit. Or, most likely, I will probably be doing a video on that topic at some point down the road. So there you have it, folks. That was my review on the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Lightning Collection, remastered, also known as the 30th Anniversary Figures. And, of course, with any review, there's got to be a rating system in place, right? Well, I have my own system that I developed called the PACT Method. And that is P-A-Q-D. And what I look at is, is the pricing, the availability, the quality, and the delivery. I rate each of those on a 1 to 10 scale. And then I give it an overall 1 to 10 scale rating. So, for the pricing, I'm going to go ahead and give it a 7. Because it's not a great price, but it's not horrible either. I think at $29.99, that would have been better. And you would have felt like you were getting more bang for your buck. While still being at a deluxe pricing scale. But hey, it's Hasbro. I'm surprised they didn't charge 40 a piece for these. Let's just be glad that they didn't. Of course, time will tell. Availability, I'm giving a 10 because you can get these everywhere. I mean, these two particular figures that I have aren't currently available on Big Bad Toy Store, but you can pre-order the rest of their team. You could easily get these at Entertainment Earth, Amazon, and of course, Hasbro Pulse. For quality, I'm going to give these an 8.5, and honestly, it's just a few shades away from being a 10, but gotta look at that neck joint, you gotta look at those hips, and yes, when there's missing paint applications like the border around the mouth on a helmet, it's little things like that that are not gonna take away from it. But they are still great action figures, and that leads me into my last category, delivery. Now I'm not talking about how these figures are shipped out, I'm talking about what's the sales pitch? What are they trying to sell you? Well, these are remastered Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, and they do feel remastered, at least from what I can remember about 
the Lightning Collection figures that I did used to have, these do feel a little bit more amped up, you know? While I made fun of it before, yes, but they do have the pinless joints, which does help with the look of the figure. That little bit of extra articulation does help, and then of course, the accessories, the head sculpts, other little details, like the pinstriping on the belt, is nice. I mean, if I'm taking the figure as is, the only thing I can really think to improve upon it is painting the soles black on the boots just because, well, that's how they look in the show, regardless of which Power Ranger it is. So did Hasbro deliver on that remastered tagline? They sure as hell did. I'm giving that a 9.5. So let's go back. We have 7 for pricing, 10 for availability, 8.5 for quality, 9.5 for delivery, giving us a total of 35. And of course, taking those four categories and averaging them out, that gives us an 8.75 out of 10. And yes, these do feel like an 8.75. They're not perfect, but they are perfect for what they are. And for in the price range, it's going to be the most detailed and the most articulated you're going to get. Anything else, you're going to be spending more and trying to get some of the previous released Mighty Morphin Power Ranger Lightning Collection figures on the aftermarket, you may as well just spend this price. Uh, granted, I'm not saying I condone Hasbro's pricing because I feel like everything they're pricing is ridiculous. I feel like everything's inflated, but I've also seen what else they're charging $35 for, which is absolute horseshit junk. This does not feel like that at all. This feels like that it's there, the quality is there, and you're getting more bang for your buck for that price in accessories. So when you're looking at it through that lens, yes, these definitely have a lot more going for them, and I would recommend them to anybody who's looking to add some Mighty Morphin Power Rangers to their collection. Anyway, as always, I appreciate your time, and if you want to see more videos like this... Shut up, 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 shut up